Hey folks, it's a beautiful good morning uh, to you from yours truly one, uh, Mr. Panuka, uh, coming you know live from Panuka Farm number two. Um, and behind me, what you can actually see is you know um, our you know maize uh, production, um, you know spanning from somewhere there, um, and then uh, you know the production goes you know all the way. Uh, that side with quite a number of blocks that we've got, you know, um, the other side. Uh, not too big, yeah, um, but quite sizable. But what I'm uh, here to talk about is what has happened, you know, uh, this, you know, farming season uh, affecting, you know, Zambia and some of the neighboring, you know, countries, I think partly Zimbabwe, uh, Botswana, and perhaps even, you know, South Africa, the impact of, you know, El Nino. Um, or simply, you know, uh, put the impact of climate change. In the case of Zambia, um, there was really quite a very, you know, strong call by the government uh, for people to, you know, come in and grow maize in large quantities, I think targeting about 10 million, you know, metric tons. Um, you know, obviously, the aim was to move from, I think, the average of about 3 to 4, yeah, roughly about 3.5 3 to 4, you know, million, you know, metric tons, so about 10 million. Uh, obviously in the quest to you know alleviate um, some of the maize you know shortages that have been you know affecting um, you know the country and uh, the farmers basically did you know heed to that call uh, planted quite a lot um, obviously the you know seed uh, suppliers made you know quite a kill uh, because we could actually see that there was um, shortage of you know maize seed um, and I think the season started very well we actually had incidences of um, you know uh, you know flooding uh, when we actually started, I remember, um, you know, the other section, we, we actually had quite a lot of, um, you know, um, incidences of, of, of flooding. And somewhere I'll actually be able to show you, we even had to dig, you know, some, you know, trenches just to allow for the water uh, to pass. But just along the way, um, then there was a drought. And I think in the last, you know, few weeks, we've actually seen quite a lot of lamentations from, you know, farmers, highly regrettable you know uh, situation um, obviously some trying to you know irrigate using um, you know buckets and stuff like that um, it's it's quite a very sad you know uh, situation uh, really uh, but uh, what I'll do now is just to walk you through the bit what we've done um, and I must also indicate before I am accused of uh, not being realistic in terms of scale um, obviously our production here is you know not too big you know um, it's slightly, you know, below, you know, five, you know, hectares. Um, but I just want to demonstrate, um, you know, the adaptation, you know, component, just in case you are actually hit uh, by what has, you know, hit us, um, you know, this season, and just see um, the outlook of our maize, given what we have tried um, to do here uh, on the farm. So, tag along, and I hope this will be, um, you know, worth, um, you know, watching. So when we planted, um, you know, this maize, we actually, you know, hooked up um, some irrigation, you know, uh, systems. And you will not basically, we've got, you know, this irrigation, you know, set up um, for all, you know, our fields um, on this farm using, you know, drip, you know, irrigation. Um, as you can see, the target obviously was just to supplement, um, you know, the rains just in case we had a bit of... Uh, uh erratic you know um you know rainfall um but alas this ended up being the main you know source of water for our you know uh, maize uh this is you know february and today when i'm doing this video this is the 18th uh of february uh 2024 and we have not had rains for close to a month here um on this farm um and only supplementing this you know using um, our irrigation, you know, setup. Obviously, uh, if the plan uh, had uh, fallen in place where, you know, we continue to have some, you know, rainfall, and then our irrigation system just comes in to supplement, would certainly be in a much better, you know, uh, position. So, by the way, our irrigation setup is all, you know, powered by, you know, solar. And, you know, given what has happened, this is how far, you know, solar power you know can actually you know take you 
Um, and again, it just helps to debunk some of the, you know, unnecessary uh, discussions around the prowess, you know, of solar uh, when it comes to agriculture. Again, you know, we are being realistic that uh, beyond obviously a certain scale of production, you know, solar power can actually become very expensive. But um, if you look at our production and most, especially the density of our production, uh, this, you know, solar power for us has really been a game changer. Of course, in the process, we also got hit with, uh, you know, army worms. But I think generally we have, uh, you know, prevailed, um, having now some, you know, quite some very good, you know, cobs. But we are at a point where we actually need a lot more water. And unfortunately, uh, looks like we still just have to rely on our own, you know, um, irrigated, you know, water supply. Uh, we had really hoped for a much better, you know, crop. Um, but when we look at what's happening to other farmers out there in Zambia, um, we are, you know, obviously quite grateful to God that uh, we have, you know, at least, you know, the resources to get this thing, you know, going. Uh, because out there the situation is really, really uh, bad. But again, the whole essence of this video is just to show you that um, with a bit of climate, you know, uh, adaptation, you know, techniques, uh, such as what we've done, um, it can actually be quite a huge, you know, um, game changer uh, to your uh, farming, you know, um, endeavors. So this is one of these, you know, blocks. Let's check out the other block. So this is the other, you know, block that is also, um, you know, hooked, you know, to our irrigation setup. And so the way we did the irrigation setup, you actually see that here, uh, some of the pipes on this side, they go and feed into this other field on my right. Um, and then if we just take a walk a bit, you actually see that uh, we have another, you know, irrigation, you know, junction that looks, you know, to the left. Okay. So this is this setup. Um, then that takes water uh, into, you know, this side uh, of the field. So not the best of maize, but obviously, like we keep saying, uh, compared to what we've seen uh, on social media, we are certainly in a much you know better uh, situation. And of course, you know, um, this you know uh, setup has been a very critical component of our you know irrigation system where we pump water. This is almost 11 meters high. Uh, you can check uh, on our YouTube channel on how we put this thing together. But it's quite a game changer to be part of your irrigation system because then it helps you with just, uh, uh, you know, gravity, um, you know, guided um, irrigation. And uh, this is partly what, you know, is credited to keep this maze looking, you know, um, slightly more greener uh, than what we've seen, you know, um, out there. So again, just more evidence of um, our, you know, production. Um, you can actually see our planting density is extremely very high and almost all the maize has made it we have one you know um drip line in the middle there and then we are planting double um on either side of each row um and yeah um you can actually see uh, the prowess of the production really doing very well very tall maize and uh, quite productive with very good um you know cobs we obviously anticipated maybe double, you know, coats. Um, by the way, this is seed code 719. Um, this is the variety that we're looking at here. Um, and I think it's done pretty, pretty well. So this is this, you know, section doing extremely very well. And then we've got another block um, on the right here, which is also still doing pretty well, but younger. Um, and we keep, you know, supplementing, you know, with our, you know, drip irrigation. And uh, you can see here, we, uh, I think they were just irrigating here, the team. Um, and, and so far it's doing very well. Um, though <laughs> the unfortunate situation with our, you know, uh, planting density is that, uh, you know, we can't really access the field inside. So if there are any, you know, blockages on the ammeters, uh, it becomes very difficult for us to go in. So again, that's just the uh, downside um, for this level of plant, you know, density. So let's keep, you know, taking a walk uh, just to see uh, what's going on um, with, you know, this field. 
and uh, the size of colds. Um, given the situation, I think it's quite pretty, you know, impressive. Uh, by the way, we were hit by uh, termites, but I think they've kind of stopped now. So that's another, in a good sign. So this is just another uh, view. Um, for this setup. So now let me take you to the other, you know, section of the um, this this production. Again, um, those that have followed, you know, our social media, you know, our posts, uh, we have actually indicated that with farming, you have to learn to choose your battles, and sometimes you have to make intelligent, you know, decisions that are free from, you know, emotions. And um, given that we had set up the irrigation, hoping, you know, the rains would be coming. But we found ourselves in a situation where, you know, now we are completely relying, you know, on our irrigation. Uh, but we had planted a lot more maize, um, hoping the rains would be there. So, unfortunately, we found ourselves in catch, you know, 22 situation uh, where we have actually made the decision to sacrifice, you know, some of the, you know, portions um, of our, you know, our production. So, this is block, um, you know, uh, Three, this side and then the one I just showed you here is block two and then we've got the other one that I showed you uh, much earlier so what we've done is that for this block which is quite more than an acre close to a hectare unfortunately we've had to kind of sacrifice it so that uh, this block and the other one I showed you earlier can you know continue to survive uh, given obviously the water resources and the irrigation setup that we had created had if we had a situation where the rains you know are coming in uh, from time to time actually would actually survive you know the whole entire production all the blocks so again um, at some point avoid making you know emotional decisions and just face the reality bite the bullet um, that's farming you need to actually have a big big heart to uh, do farming um, so here you can actually see because we are not irrigating um, you know now even the termites you know um, have kicked in these are the termites at work here uh, given that we have discontinued irrigation here uh, to sacrifice this section um, it's still doing pretty well but generally not very good given that we've discontinued the water here um, again it's just making kind of intelligent you know um, uh, decisions and you can actually see now that we're not irrigating it's even been hit by you know army worms and all manner of shenanigans have befallen um you know uh this field so quite a very you know sorry you know side uh, even from our end but when you actually compare with an average farmer out there who doesn't have any form of irrigation the situation is extremely very very you know dire so yeah for me looking at my fields like this uh this is not you know good but uh we've been around and uh, somehow we've uh, <laughs> come to terms to how you know uh, farming really you know happens and uh, some of the risks that you know do you know affect um, you know any farming uh, enterprise so yeah if you're plunging into farming welcome to the club and these are some of the risks that will hit you uh, if you're not you know well uh, prepared away from that grim you know situation uh, at least we're back to this section that has made it uh, courtesy of obviously our irrigation, you know, setup. Um, lesson number one: avoid making emotional decisions when it actually comes to farming. One, be realistic about your preparedness, you know, in terms of your irrigation capacity, uh, and know that you know these risks around, you know, climate change are actually here and here to stay, unfortunately. Um, and so, in the way you do farming now, um, you have to be very realistic. Um, and for us, you know, we obviously hooked up the irrigation just in advance, just in case something like this happens. And obviously we paid attention to some of the issues that were coming in, the news around, you know, El Nino, you know, coming through. And so we hooked it up. Then part of realism also is that we've got bigger land, but we decided to do something slightly less than five hectares that is kind of commensurate to our irrigation, you know, capacity. Why? We didn't want the, you know, uh, the impact of uh, something like this happening, you know, affecting too, too big, you know, an area for us just in case, um, you know, the situation became, you know, 
are irredeemable, such as what you know has has happened. So, realism entails that you understand your you know capacity in terms of irrigation um, and other remediation you know measures. And can you also stomach um, the loss? So, if you go for 20 hectares, really hoping just the rains will come through, um, and then something like this happens, obviously the impact is a bit too grave. So we really need to get a bit more realistic as farmers, um, but also begin to look into things like setting up irrigation um, and then plant what you can you know, realistically uh, manage. So that is the situation that we're in. Um, and I hope those you know, tidbits that we've actually churned out today um, you know, will be very beneficial uh, to you as uh, you know, farmers out there. Uh, obviously we do understand it's quite costly to set up some of the irrigation systems, but this is part of what we call best infrastructure. When you're starting a farm, you need to make sure that you, you get it right, set it up. Uh, to develop this farm, it's taken us quite a number of years, you know, putting together some of these, you know, um, irrigation issues. Um, so, yeah, that's just how you roll in this business um, if you want to minimize the scars. So, from yours truly, one, uh, Mr. Panuka, thank you so much and uh, see you uh, in the next, you know, episode and uh, hopefully uh, you get over, you know, this, you know, bump if you've been hit like us. Ciao.